Welcome to Legal Frequencies, a telecoms podcast by Evershed Sutherland. Everything you never wanted to know about telecoms. My name is Stegla Fellis and I am the head of the real estate litigation team in London and head of the telecoms code group at Eversheds. Our holiday countdown for 2023 is a What is Telecom series, helping you to understand some telecoms basics. This is the 10th in our series and will cover what is the imposition process. If an operator is unable to agree with an occupier of land, the terms and consideration of a code agreement, then the operator may seek to have an agreement imposed on the occupier by a tribunal and to have any other persons banned by that agreement. There are three main types of an agreement. The first is interim code agreements and MSVs, which are made pursuant to paragraph 26 of the code. The next are new code agreements pursuant to para 20 of the code. And the third are the renewal agreements pursuant to para 33 of the code. The code also provides for what are known as temporary code agreements made pursuant to paragraph 27, but these are less common. So the first step in the process for an operator is to serve the relevant notice. The notices are in a prescribed form and are available from the Ofcom website. After expiry of the relevant notice period, which is usually 28 days for Para 20 notices and Para 26 notices, and six months for a Para 33 renewal notice, at which point the operator can then issue proceedings, which are known as references. References are currently issued in the upper tribunal, but from next year, they will commence in the first tier tribunal. An operator does also have the right to issue a reference within the statutory 28-day period in respect of Para 26 code notices where there is a matter of urgency. So what happens when a, a reference is made to the tribunal? Well, the tribunal, when making decision whether to impose an agreement, will consider the test set out in Para 21 of the code. And that test is that the tribunal may make an order if and only if it thinks that two conditions are met. The first condition is that the prejudice caused to the occupier of the land by the imposition of the agreement can be adequately compensated by money. And the second condition is that the public benefit likely to result from the imposition of the agreement outweighs the prejudice to the occupier of the land. When considering public benefit, the tribunal must have regard to the public's interest in access to a choice of high quality electronic communication services. The Power 21 test also states that the tribunal may not make an order if it thinks that the occupier of the land intends to redevelop all or part of the land to which the code right would relate or any neighbouring land and could not reasonably do so if the order were made. So if, having considered the paragraph 21 test, the tribunal is to impose an agreement, then the terms of the agreement must include terms that the tribunal thinks appropriate for ensuring that the least possible loss and damage is caused by the exercise of the code right to persons who either occupy the land, own interests in the land, or are from time to time on that land. So it's actually quite a wide body of people. If an agreement is imposed, this will be by an order of the tribunal and the parties will not need to execute the agreement. That's a very whistle-stop tour of what the process is. Thank you for listening. We hope you found it interesting and insightful. If you would like any further information, then please do contact me, Fegla Fellas at Eversched Sutherland. Not that easy to say. If you would like to listen to any of our other podcasts in the series, then they are available to download on Spotify and Apple.